Welcome back to another daily update here in the Creepy Crawler's Garage. And today we're gonna to be working on weathering some of the objects that we use in the backgrounds of photography and the backgrounds of the videos we shoot. Let's go ahead and get started. Don't go anywhere. I thought we'd do things a little different today and we'll work on these projects together. And Addy Monster sent us some stuff yesterday and I think a few of those things will work well for what we need. Now I'm not sure how we should go about this. This is all kind of new to me. So I, I guess we'll go ahead and just roll some background music. Uh, maybe do a simple logo intro and voiceover. And I thought we'd start with the wheels and the disc brakes that Addy sent us. And what I wanted to do is just first give them a coat of paint with gunmetal spray paint. And now I'll hit the highlights with some silver rub and buff. So what I'm trying to do here is just highlight the high points with the rub and buff. What we're, what we're really doing, so the idea is to make these look they be the best they can in photographs or on film. Because th these items are basically gonna be sitting in backgrounds in the new series, or they're gonna be sitting in alleyways, things like that. So we need them to look the best they can on film. And the way you do that is to build through layers of highlights and darks, or lights and darks. So you have your mid-tone, which is your overall color, and then build the lights and darks, just, you like, just like you would in an oil painting. Say if you're doing uh, a portrait or a landscape or something, you're gonna build that oil painting up through lights and darks to give it a three-dimensional look. We're just doing that on three-dimensional items. So here I'm doing it with rub and buff to hit the highlights. Um, and rub and buff is great stuff to do this with. So you can just use a sponge, uh, use the rub and buff to just ru run it right across those high points of whatever it is you're working on. And the rub and buff comes in all different colors from silver uh, to pewters to coppers and golds uh, and tarnish colors. So it works great for this kind of application. And I'm gonna do this to both the wheels and the disc brakes. With the highlights taken care of, now I wanna start adding the darks. And the way I'm gonna do that is with some black wash. What I'm using here is Vallejo black wash and I've actually diluted it even further with some water. I wanna make sure it's nice and thin so that when I apply it to the wheel, it actually flows into those deep recesses and gives me those dark, those nice darks deep into the wheel and it gives me the depth I'm looking for. And then what I'll do is I'll come back and knock off the top with, with, a, with a rag, so I'll just wipe down those highlights with a rag to make sure and bring those highlights back out. And then of course we can do this, we can repeat this process with it being nice and thin, we can just keep adding layers on top of layer. Now if you look, we've only added one layer to the original wheel, but if you compare that to the two wheels we haven't, the two wheels on the right, that we haven't any black added any black wash, you can really see the difference and how much the, the, the wheel that we've added, the black wash really pops. And that pop's gonna come out on camera or in photography. So I'll do this on all four wheels and then I'll also do the same thing on the brake rotors. Now for the brake rotors, I also want to add some rust to them because I think I'm going to be using them in an alleyway scene. So I want them to look like they've been sitting outside for a while. And the way I'm going to do that is by using this Tamiya Weathering Master Kit. Basically what it is, is just dry pigments that you can apply with a brush. It comes with this little brush like I'm using and you can use it to kind of give highlights or hit the high points uh, with this rust pigment. Uh, and then the other side of the brush actually has an actual brush head, which I like to use to give just kind of a powdering. Uh, you can powder the surface to give it an overall rust look. And I'll also use some brown wash, some undiluted brown wash to give us give us a little heavier tones of rust. And I'll kind of run, run it around the edges. I want the, these darker tones uh, to be more in the crevices. And again, I'll run it around those, those edges and then give it a good wipe with uh, a rag and, and do this in layers until I get it uh, to that right depth that I'm looking for. And as a final touch on these brake rotors, I want to go back and hit those braking surfaces on the rotors. So I'll use some of the silver from the Tamiya weathering kit, and I'll just run it around the braking surfaces on these rotors just to bring out the highlights, kind of the, on where the wear points would be on these rotors.
While the wheels and tires dry, I thought we'd turn our attention to the to the metal drum that Addy Monster sent us. And what I want to do is turn this into a burnt out metal barrel or metal drum, the kind that you find in a homeless encampment that they stand around uh, and burn for, for warmth. And the first thing I did, or first thing really you want to do when you're, because I don't have any idea really how to do this or, or what it should look like. So the first thing I want to do is get me a reference photo. And that's exactly what it did. I just, I just Googled it and got a reference photo uh, off the internet. And then this is what I'll work from. So I started by just painting it brown. And, and then I'm going to take that black wash, that, that diluted black wash, and I'm going to give the whole thing a coat of this diluted black wash just to give it uh, some variance to that brown. I want it, I don't want it to just be a nice flat brown like this, so I'm going to use the black wash very liberally and very randomly just to give it some variance. And then I'll go back, what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll spray the whole thing uh, with some matte clear. Now with the matte coat completely clear, I'm gonna go back to my Tamiya weathering kit and use some of the dark color to start adding in the burnt parts or the singed points on this barrel where the, the, the barrel's gotten so hot that the old paint on the barrel has started burning away and turning very dark and almost black. So I just wanna add in those dark points uh, up, up at the top and around the ridges and of course at the bottom also of the barrel. I really like how the, the, the black from the Tamiya kit gives the barrel uh, a burnt look, but I think I wanna go even further. And I think what I'm gonna do is use a dry brush technique. Uh, and what that means is I'm gonna load up my brush with some paint, and then I'm gonna really kinda wipe it off and get the a lot of the paint out of the brush on like a paper towel or something, where the brush is kinda dry, and then I'm gonna come in and start adding that paint on the undersides of these ridges here. Now, I like, when I do this, I like to use an old, uh, ratty brush, one where the bristles are kind of going everywhere. And then when you when you dry it off on the rag, also you'll get those brushes to really uh, start kind of going everywhere. Because the idea is you want it to be very uh, sporadic and give you uh, kind of that, that texture. You don't want a nice new brush that's gonna give you a clean texture. You want a, a very rough rough texture. Um, and an old ratty, and like any old brush that you have just laying around that's kind of worn out, hold on to those because they work great for these kind of techniques. And I finish off with the black by painting out the entire inside of the barrel. And now I wanna add rust to it, just like we did on the brake rotors. And I'm gonna use that same rust from the Tamiya kit, and I'm gonna use it on the top sides of these ridges. So I did dark under the ridges and light, or the rust color, the lighter rust color above the ridges. And that's gonna really give you an appearance of depth and it also, I think, from looking at my reference picture, when the fire goes up, that heat goes up, and it seems like it burns on the top sides of things. So you get more of a rust on the top and more of a singed on the bottom. Anyways, I think it gives it a good look, so I'm gonna do that all the way around on the barrel.
I also want to go in and give some highlighted points of rust. And I want to do this all the way around the barrel because uh, I don't want it to be just one kind of solid tone of rust all the way around. I want to give some variance. So don't be scared to also use your finger. You can uh, blend some of those highlights. You can leave some of the highlights a little brighter. The idea is to make sure it's very, it's, it's varied. You don't, every, things that happen in nature, things that are, ha happen naturally are going to have a lot of variance to them. So keep that in mind when you're adding these different weathering elements. As a final touch for the barrel, I want to add the material in the barrel that's actually been burnt. So in the homeless encampment that we're going to be using this in, they've been burning whatever they can find, whether it's wood pallets or whatever, but they're burning anything they can find for warmth. So we need to add that to the barrel and never hesitate to use things from the real world. So that's exactly what I did. I just went out to my barbecue pit, got some burnt charred wood out of the burn box, uh, and I'm using that. I'm just breaking it up with a, uh, uh, here I'm just breaking it up with some channel locks and then just fill the barrel to the top. I wanna fill it all the way to the top and let it poke out the top just a little bit. So now, no matter what angle we photograph this or take a video of it, we'll, we can see the material that's in there that's been burnt. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll use some of that fine powder uh, they got left behind from breaking up uh, uh, the, the charred wood. And I'll just use a towel and rub that around the, the top edge where some of that charred wood and some of that burnt soot has settled on that top rim. Just use, uh, if you need something to look like it's been burnt and has soot on it, use soot. I mean, it's it's that simple. You don't have to fake it. Just use the real thing from, from, from nature and you're going to get the look you need. These are very simple and fast weathering techniques we can use when we're building out scenes for photography, if we're building out a scene uh, for a video we're shooting. In fact, if we take one last look, we can see that the wheels no longer have that cheap plastic chrome look, but they actually look like a real set of wheels we could use in a photograph. Uh, the barrel no longer is that lime green toy. It actually looks like a real burnt out barrel uh, that we could use in any alleyway scene. The rotors are no longer just flat pla uh, black plastic, but it uh, they actually look like a real pile of uh, rotors that we could set in the corner of any garage or uh, on the side of a street in any scene that we're doing. But the point point is, this is very quick technique, which techniques we can use to build out backgrounds and to build out scenes that we're building uh, in those photographs we're shooting or in those videos we're shooting. Thanks for joining me again here in the garage for another daily update. And thank you for all the support on this series. I really do appreciate it. And also consider supporting via a channel membership or, or over at the Patreon page. If you'd like to get that extra content, hit that like button if you would for me, guys. Hit the subscribe button so you can keep up with all these different uh, episodes. Thanks for joining me again today, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.